Movies are meant to be entertaining and exciting, but some people can't tell the difference between reality and fiction. Wanna play Psycho Killer? Watching a movie is a great way to be entertained and escape reality, but some people don't understand that what they're watching is purely for entertainment. In fact, some people make it reality. The following are real cases of people who watched a fictional movie featuring a gruesome death scene and morbidly found inspiration to replicate what they saw in the real world. Prepare to dive into the mind of the disturbed, because here are 10 movies that drove people to kill. Number one is Robocop 2. On March 25, 1991, serial killer Nathaniel White began a killing spree in Orange County, New York after getting released from his prison parole. He claimed a total of six victims, all women that he brutally beat and stabbed to death. His first victim was 29-year-old Julia Frank, and he claimed that he had been inspired by the movie Robocop 2, killing Frank in the same gruesome way that a scene in the film portrayed. After he was caught on August 2nd, 1992, White confessed to police and described the scene calmly, casually, as if completely undisturbed. He said that he saw someone get their throat slit and then cut right down the chest in the film, so he mimicked the entire thing, right down to the position that the body was left in. And on May 27, 1993, White was sentenced to 150 years in prison, and today is still serving that sentence. Number two is Natural Born Killers. The 1994 Oliver Stone film Natural Born Killers has inspired some of the most hideous copycat murders in history. The plot follows married couple Mickey and Mallory Knox as they travel through the United States on a killing spree, sparing almost no one. The controversial film has spawned several serial killers, including 19-year-old Sarah Edmondson and 18-year-old Benjamin Deras. On March 7, 1995, after watching the film two days earlier, the couple left Oklahoma to head out on their own version of the murderous road trip. Ben ended up killing Mississippi businessman William Savage, shooting him twice in the head at point-blank range. Later, he and Sarah robbed a convenience store, where Sarah Sarah shot the cashier, Patsy Byers, but failed to kill her. Sadly, the bullet left Patsy a quadriplegic. Both shooters were ultimately caught, and Sarah is now out on parole after serving less than 12 years of her 30-year sentence, while her partner, Ben, continues to serve his life sentence. Number three is A Nightmare on Elm Street. On September 14, 2004, 23-year-old paranoid schizophrenic Daniel Gonzalez, inspired by the 1984 horror film A Nightmare on Elm Street, went on a two-day killing spree across London and Sussex. Arming himself with numerous knives, Gonzalez murdered four people and injured two others, all random strangers as he acted out his own gruesome Freddy Krueger nightmare. He attacked his victims as they strolled along the street or by gaining access to their houses, breaking in and stabbing them. He claimed that he was inspired to be like Kruger, who was his idol, and that his goal was to be a famous serial killer. Reports stated that Gonzalez didn't receive the proper treatment for his condition and was given six life sentences. After his conviction, Gonzalez attempted to commit suicide by biting through the artery in his arm. He survived, but on August 9, 2007, he succeeded in ending his own life with the edges of a broken CD case in his prison cell. Number four is Scream. On August 13, 1998, 16-year-old Mario Salvador Padilla and his 15-year-old cousin Samuel Jermez Ramirez murdered Gina, Padilla's mother. Sam held the 37-year-old woman down while Mario stabbed her with multiple knives and a screwdriver in her apartment in Los Angeles, California. The two teens were also prepared to murder Padilla's stepfather had he been home at the time. Following that, they planned to go on a Scream-style murder spree 
spree, even starting with a classmate who looked a lot like the character played by Drew Barrymore, who died in the first series. They had wanted to buy Grim Reaper costumes and voice changing boxes, just like the murders in the movie, but they couldn't because they were short on cash. Both teens were tried as adults and both were sentenced to life in prison. Number five is Bug. On June 3rd, 2007, after becoming obsessed with the 2006 psycho-thriller Bug, a movie which explores the line between reality and delusion, 36-year-old millionaire insurance executive Alberto Izaga did the unthinkable. Experiencing some kind of extreme psychotic break, Izaga believed that somehow his daughter, Yanir, had become possessed by Satan and that he needed to kill her. He began screaming, God doesn't exist, die, 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 and I have to kill her while he clubbed the two-year-old to death in front of his wife in the London apartment. After paramedics arrived, he chanted the words Big Ben for five minutes straight and started to lick the face of a neighbor that had arrived to help. Ruled not guilty by reason of insanity, the judge stated that his guilt would be worse than any jail sentence that he could ever receive. Number six is Child's Play. Considered Australia's worst serial killer, 29-year-old Martin Bryant claimed 35 victims and injured 23 more between April 28th and April 29th of 1996. This event is now known as the Port Arthur Massacre. Suffering from schizophrenia and with an IQ of only 66, which is the average intelligence of an 11-year-old, Bryant became enamored with Chucky, the possessed doll from the Child's Play horror films. Psychiatrists later claimed that those movies movies were contributing factors into what transpired. But it turns out that Bryant isn't the only murderer that was inspired by this doll either. In England, over the course of seven days in December of 1992, 16-year-old Suzanne Capper was brutally tortured while her captors chanted, Chucky's coming to play. She was later set on fire, but survived long enough to name her six kidnappers before falling into a coma and ultimately dying. Number seven is Queen of the Damned. After watching the 2002 movie Queen of the Damned over 100 times, 22-year-old Alan Menzies of Fald House, Scotland claimed that the fictional vampire from the movie named Akasha came to him in the middle of the night. In his delusion, he explained that Akasha had promised him immortality as a vampire if he murdered someone. In December of 2002, Menzies murdered a childhood friend, 21-year-old Thomas McKendrick, after McKendrick had simply made a derogatory remark about the movie character. Menzies smashed him over the head with a hammer, stabbed him a total of 42 times, and even began drinking his blood. Even more disturbing is the fact that after Menzies killed McKendrick, he ate part of his head before he buried him in a shallow grave. A short time later, Menzies attempted suicide in order to reach the next life and reap his vampiric rewards, but he failed. He was arrested and in October of 2003, he was sentenced to life in prison. It wasn't a long stay though, as in November of 2004, he finally got his wish and hung himself in his cell. Number eight is The Exorcist. On February 22nd of 1980, in Wichita Falls, Texas, after The Exorcist was aired on television, 25-year-old paranoid schizophrenic Patricia Frazier believed that her daughter, Kunji Wilson, was possessed by demons. So she decided to carve out the four-year-old's heart. She claimed that she saw grass growing out of her daughter's chest and was ordered to cut it out by spirits that were reportedly touching her body. Despite Frazier's condition, it was psychologically that claimed that it was a scene in the movie that caused the murder due to how normal she seemed during that same day. She was tried once resulting in a hung jury and a mistrial only to be tried again and found innocent by reason of insanity in June of 1981. Frazier was ultimately sent to the Wichita Falls State Hospital to be treated until she was released into the custody of her mother on February 2nd, 1982. Number nine is American Psycho. 
Released in 2000, the movie American Psycho was said to be the inspiration for a classroom stabbing. In February of 2004, 14-year-old Michael Hernandez stabbed a fellow classmate, 14-year-old Jamie Go, more than 40 times and slit his throat in a bathroom at the Southwood Middle School in Miami, Florida. Hernandez admitted that he identified with the murderer Patrick Bateman in the movie and wanted to simply become a real-life serial killer. The murder was him acting out his role as the character in the film. Michael had a plan, however, and believed that he was given special powers by God, who agreed with Michael's decision to stab his friend. In 2008, Hernandez was found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. However, after a U.S. Supreme Court ruling in 2012, Michael became eligible for another hearing to determine a new sentencing. But what's most disturbing is that on February 22, 2016, after more than a decade behind bars, he was found to be just as obsessed with the murder and gore as he was when he was just 14 and was given yet another life sentence. And number 10 is the Ten Commandments. Between February and June of 1959, 23-year-old Heinrich Pomerenke attacked a number of women in Hornburg, Germany, taking four lives and attempting to rape and kill dozens more. He blamed the movie The Ten Commandments for his crimes, claiming that the way that the film depicted women made him believe that they were the root of all evil and needed to be punished. But even before he started his commandments-inspired murder spree, at 15 years old, he became a rapist in Mecklenburg, Germany, and from there he continued his sexual assaulting into Switzerland and Austria too, avoiding police persecution all the way. And he may have gotten away with everything had it not been for his actions on June 18, 1959, when he brought a suit to the tailor for mending. The suit, it turns out, was stained with blood, and with it, Heinrich had left behind a briefcase which contained a sawed-off shotgun. And on October 22, 1960, Heinrich was given given six separate life sentences as well as 140 years in prison. He died there on December 27th, 2008. So those were 10 movies who drove people to kill. But I want to know from you what you think of these stories. Are these movies partly responsible for these murders or are they entirely on the individual? Leave your comments below because I'll be reading through them and I'm going to pin the best one to the top. But as always, I very much appreciate you guys coming by today. Remember to come back tomorrow and every weekday at exactly 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because I'll have a brand new video for you. I'll see you then.